like I don't remember like how the judge thing became but once we had the idea in place that we were gonna record this record and give it away inside the schism fanzine I was like oblivious to anything else around me I was so fucking consumed with judge and, and what it was gonna be I mean I was so on fire because I just thought I came up with the coolest idea. It was like, that scene was the family that I was looking for. Like I fit in with a group of people who didn't fit in anywhere, you know? But together, we were whole. I'm like a fucking shy, introverted guy. Why I wanted to sing for a band, I have no fucking idea. It's just what I was compelled to do. It's what scares me the most. Now being in the front, all eyes on me, because I hate that. I feel it, it's coming out. Beating sorrows of days gone wrong. The reason I started Judge was like a full-on like lashing out at something I was I was pissed off about. At the time, I was playing drums in Youth of Today, and uh, I'm hearing all these people trying to tear Youth of Today down, and it was so off fucking base. I mean, these you ain't gonna find nicer people than John Purcell and fucking Ray Capo. I mean. I was angry about it, man, to the point where I got, like, the high road isn't working anymore. You know, let's, let's get dirty a little bit. Mike actually approached me, he said, you know, I'm thinking about doing this band. You know, I really want to do it. I've been writing lyrics. I want to make it kind of like oi, and I want to make it kind of dark and tough. And that's when the whole kind of, like, brainstorming of Judge happened. And it was sort of a very kind of disheartening time in our life. Straight Edge was kind of, was kind of on its way out. I will say this, me and Mike were very serious about Straight Edge. I think Judge was really born out of this kind of like disheartened sort of dark place, which we were actually in at the time, especially Mike. I've seen a lot of good people get stepped on, but not anymore. We're Judge. This next song is about people who do drugs. I've heard the excuses. I just want to have a good time. I want to visit heaven. You know? The way I see it, drugs just get in your way. And the people who do drugs are always in my way. I make this band that's going to be like the total opposite of what Youth of Today was. It's going to be this militant, nasty fucking band, like in your face. Everything that they accused you of today of being, I was gonna be. I'm gonna write all these fucking militant, fucking nasty. I'm gonna be as mean as possible. I'm, it's gonna be fucking exclusionary. That's what I was gonna give him, and just be like, okay, can you tell the difference now between this band and that band? He was very super passionate and serious about doing these bands. He had a notebook, lyrics. I mean, he was writing every day. He was like super into it. Now that I know I'm, I'm going to make this fucking band, I just want to like fucking bleed on the fucking paper. Just, I'm not going to hide anything, you know? He wanted to sing. And if you know Mike, he's a very shy, reserved guy. And I couldn't for the life of me picture him singing in a band. We recorded at Don Fury's for $75. We freaking banged it out, like first take, practically everything. And I'm listening in the headphones, I'm like, man, this music is actually really freaking cool. 
And so Don Fury sends Mike in to do the vocals. And Fed Up is the first song. Roll the tape. I was friggin' blown away. Like, he opened his mouth, it's like this freaking lion's roar like comes out of his mouth. And he pretty much sang Fed Up, like, first take. I really started thinking like, oh my God, this is like gonna be better than I ever imagined. So that's really like how, you know, the, the judge thing first kind of solidified into like, we're gonna do this as a band. I remember it must have been like 88. Purcell and I and someone else had decided we weren't gonna wear leather that year, right? Because we were all vegetarian and whatnot. And so I remember I was with Purcell and he goes up to Mike and he's like, guy, 88, no leather. And, and Mike just turns and he's like, nobody tells me what to do. I lost a lot of friends when I started Judge. I well, guess I said a couple things that pissed some people off. But I did lose another. But it's to make me stop and it'll never hold me back. We'd go on tour and it was like the rumor would get there right before us, you know? And it would get there, but it was like this big. And then at the next spot, the rumor was here yesterday, but it was this big, you know? And then by the time you get to the West Coast, it's like full blown, like the stories were just out of fucking control. The most common one was that I was this, you know, militant straight edge guy who just wanted to kill drug dealers. And, uh, you know, but I wish it was that simple, you know? Being in California and fucking, the phone rang and they, they actually asked for Mike Judge. And uh, they're like filling us in that the Klan is gonna have a rally and that, you know, the hammer skins will be there and they're gonna fucking like protest Judge and whatnot. So, you know, when Mike Judge gets here, he can like just take care of all that. You know, it's like, okay, I'll let my judge know. You know, like, who fucking calls up and fucking goes, yeah, can, can you get my judge down here? There's a, the clan is rallying. Like, what the fuck am I gonna do, you know? Like, I, it was just like that all the fucking time. Like, yeah, seriously, like, I was a comic book fucking guy who was just fucking gonna come in and fucking, here I am to save the fucking day. You know, I couldn't even save myself, man. I was trying to tell you all, you just didn't listen. Okay. Called, I've lost. The straight edge scene itself didn't have a lot of violence in it. Most of the kids were into this kind of like more positive music. When Judge came around, that completely changed. Things were just fucking violent. Like, we just attracted it, you know, because I guess I, you know, I wanted it and now, uh, now I'm seeing what, you know. Fucking never dawned on me that fucking words are like that important, you know. Like when you're when you're in a position where you can write something and people are gonna listen to you and you don't take it seriously, you know, you could cause a lot of damage. And I did. They wanted an excuse to fucking hurt somebody. And I was their excuse. Now we can be the fucking you know, animals that we want to be. Now we can treat the weaker people the way we want to treat them. You know? The 
Bringing it down record, I mean, I couldn't be like more honest. And I tried to like explain myself and just say, listen, I'm just a reactionary guy, you know? So you can stop with the hard edge and shit and fucking these straight edge gangs. Those were just the words of, you know, this fucked up guy, you know? No matter how fucking hard I screamed, they were always like going back to that first reference point, the first thing I heard, you know? And I could never break that. They still wanted the fucking straight edge revenge, you know? There's nothing worse than having your own words like spit back in your face, you know? And you just, you wanna get pissed off, but then you fucking realize that you're the one who fucking did it, you know? Those, it's, you came up with the idea, stupid, <laughs> you know? There was just no making up for it, man. That's why the band blew up. We were doing a tour and by the time we got to Florida, I was, uh, I was just shot. I was out of it, man. I just couldn't take it anymore. If you read Mike's lyrics, he's coming from a dark place and music for him, especially writing lyrics, was a very cathartic thing you know, for him. He's had this kind of fucked up life and he's had a lot of heavy things happen in his life and he kind of sang about it. So kids that had fucked up lives could relate to it. So we would play a show and it would not just be straight as kids, it'd be skinheads, you know, because, you know, Mike looked like a skinhead. You know, I went from being in the youth today where everyone's kind of like positive and happy, channel, channel, make a change to, Judge would play a show and there'd be like skinheads hanging out before the shows, like with guns. A really big, you know, downward turn for Judge as we played this one show, one of those last shows that we played for that Bringing It Down tour. All these like white power Nazi, like bona fide Aryan Nazi skinheads showed up. And we're just like, Jesus Christ, here we go again. Some guy wandered into the show. It wasn't even hardcore, but he just kind of wandered into the show, kind of near the pit, and all these skinheads started to pound him, like these racist skinheads. These were the guys who were up front singing every word, and a black guy comes in, and now they're freaking, you know, beating him down. So these are like our fans. Since when the six guys, a one old guy, prove anything, man? Mike was very depressed after that show, super depressed, because, you know, you can imagine, he's the one that's writing the lyrics, he's the one kind of putting himself out there. I remember packing up and Purcell was driving, and I was riding shotgun, and uh, for the first time in like two fucking tours, but we just weren't talking. I was just looking out the window and I knew we were on our way home. But I think finally I just said, uh, when we get home, I think I'm gonna quit. And he just said something like, I think it might be that time or something like that. And that was it. I didn't talk to those guys for quite a long time. I just, I didn't hear from them for a while. No, it was just the end of it.